So next I'm going to do the mode and the median so that I've covered the other measures of central tendency. And the first one I'm going to take care of is the mode because that's the easiest one to actually calculate. So I'm just going to write the mode is equal to 1. Well, that was pretty easy. Now what did I do there? Well, I'm looking at the curve right here and I can see that the most common or most commonly occurring value or the most likely value in this case is one it's the value that has the highest probability so that makes it the mode and that's all that is really involved in other curves you might be looking for something like a maximum or something like that but in many cases it would just be done using the calculator so next i'm going to do the median now the median is the middle value which means that it occurs when the sum of the probabilities is 0.5 so, what I'm going to do is the integral between 0 and some value, I'll call it A, of our curve, f of x, dx, and I know that, that must be equal to 0 0.5. So, what I can say here is that the integral between 0 and A of, uh, what was it again, 4x cubed, is equal to 0 0.5 and well evaluating this uh, we're going to get the integral which is 4x to the 4 over 4 which well, just becomes x to the power of 4 between 0 and a is equal to 0 0.5 again subbing the 0 in isn't really going to do anything so we end up with a to the power of 4 equals 0 0.5 which means that a equals the fourth root of 0 0.5. Now, it should technically be plus or minus the fourth root, but in this case, having a negative value of a doesn't really make all that much sense. So I'm just going to get my calculator here, and I'm going to do the fourth root of 0 0.5. And it works out to be 0 0.841. So, A equals 0 0.841. And that's it really. Now, this value might not be particularly surprising. If we have a look at the curve here, we can see that there's not all that much area under the curve to start off with, but it increases quite significantly once we get to these values that are closer to 1. So we'd expect it to be somewhere sort of close to the value of 1. And this is a really handy uh, process which can be used to find other things like percentiles. So you might be asked to find, for example, the 90th percentile, which just means we're looking for the 90% mark. And so instead of um, putting the integral between 0 and a equal to 0.5, you just put the integral equal to, say, 0.9. Or if you're looking for the 85th percentile, then you'd put it equal to 0 0.85. And this is something which we're going to use a little bit later on when we get to calculating the um, interquartile range, because we're going to need to calculate the 25th and the 75th uh, percentiles to be able to do that. Right, so to finish up this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just set us up for the last part, which is to calculate the measures of spread in this particular distribution. There we are, sorry, I just had to fix up the screen. And um, what I'm going to do with those, I'm just going to write down the rules to start off with. So, I know that the variance in x follows the same rules as before. It's equal to e of x squared minus e of x all squared. But because it's a continuous distribution, I'm going to just write it as e of x squared minus mu squared and of course the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance so also remember that when we're dealing with continuous distributions the variance we call sigma squared and so the standard deviation is just going to be sigma anyway we'll get stuck into it in the next video and finish this up